Hello everyone, this is Gail and I am back with another tutorial and this is one that I have been wanting to do for many years and you're going to laugh at me when I tell you that this is something I saw in the May 2007 art jewelry magazine. Uh, I have this book that I keep where when I would buy a magazine that had polymer clay tutorials in it, <coughs> excuse me, I would, uh, at first I kept all the magazines, but it got to be too many. So then I would start taking the, um, the pages, and here they are, pages that I took out and I stapled together, and I've kept these in a book of things that I wanted to do. And I just never did this one. And I was flipping through my book and cleaning up the other day. And I thought, okay, I'm going to try this. But this is, and I hope I get her name right. This is someone I never did meet. But her, the person that did this tutorial is Cassie Muranaka. And it, was, it, it is in uh, the Art Jewelry Magazine, May 2007. And it calls for actually uh, six colors, but I've only got five here, and I'll explain the sixth one to you in a minute, as well as white and translucent. And I'm not sure because the way she measures is different from the way I measure. So I think I'm going to just roll out the entire block of clay. I may not need all of it, but that's okay. I'd rather have too much than to get into this and not have enough. So I am going to pause the camera while I open all of my um, clays. I will tell you I'm using Primo Pomegranate, Wisteria, Jungle, Denim. I'm not sure if this is even available anymore, but some kind of a lighter blue and wasabi, which is my one of my favorites, as well as the white and the translucent. But I'm going to condition all of this clay off camera. I won't make you look at it, but I wanted you to see this before I got started. And I will be right back. Okay, I'm back, and I decided to try using only half of a block of clay. And I don't think I told you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making a bracelet. I don't make many finished projects, and I think it's time we do one where we can, you know, work on it together and get it all done. But what I did is I cut my colors into thin pieces, excuse me, to run through the pasta machine. But I took one piece and rolled it through the thickest setting. And I'm going to cut, I've got a one inch Kemper cutter, but anything that you've got as long as you use the same one. I have a one inch, I'm going to cut a one inch circle from each one of these colors. And this is something I learned from Lindley Honani, who is the color master with clay. Uh, don't I don't know. Let me mix these together. Oh, I haven't done the red. I was waiting till the last to do the red because I didn't want the red all over my other clay. You know how red clay can be. Let me just move this here and cut a circle out of the red. Now these are all equal. Now do you know what you do when you mix a bunch of colors together? You end up with mud. But in this case, this mud is going to help us a lot. So I'm going to blend this together. And again, it's kind of cold in my craft room, so I may have to use my pasta machine to do this. Matter of fact, I think I will. If you don't mind listening to it, I may even turn the sound off while I'm doing this. So hold on just a minute. Okay, now as you can see, I have this purplish brown color. And usually you don't want mud. You know, if you put 
um, colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, you will end up with mud. And where is my color wheel? I don't know that I have it handy. I've got one up here somewhere, but you know how it is when you're cleaning. But anyway, opposites on your color wheel look good when you use them together. But they don't look... Excuse me, I picked up a magnet and it's full of little things from my desk. Like yellow and purple look really good together, but if you blend them together, you're going to get mud. Some shade of brown. And so you, you don't want to ever mix those. Like even if you make a Skinner blend, you're going to want to want a white or something in between them or else they'll mix. But in this case... <coughs> I'm going to mix six colors, so I need to divide this into six pieces. Now, how can I do this efficiently? Let's see how long this is. All right, if I, let me move this out of the way. Luckily, I have that on plastic. If I measure this, it's not quite four inches long. So if I do, let me see what happens if I do three quarters of an inch. It's three quarters, two, three, four, five. And I need six pieces, so it can't be three quarters of an inch. So let me go back to um, I just want to use all of this. Maybe I'll just cut it to three inches and cut it in half inch. All right, that's three inches. And I will cut this in half inch increments. I have five equal pieces, I mean six equal pieces. And what I'm going to do, like I said, this is something Lindley taught us at Fandango. I missed this one here. There. If you take these colors, this mud, and mix it with each one of these colors, it will it'll make them all to where they will they go together. So this is a trick that she told us that would be good if you've ever you want to put colors together and you don't know if they'll go together. You just try this trick. Put one with the white and one with the red, which is back here. So I'm going to blend all of these together, and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and I've got all of my clay conditioned and rolled out. And I will show you the differences in the colors when I get to that part. But right now I'm going to work on a cane. So what I'm going to do, I've got some translucent and some white that is rolled out on a number five setting of the pasta machine. And I'm going to lay the translucent down. And then I'm going to lay the white on top of it. Now hopefully these are the same length, they're not the same width, but I think I cut them both to nine inches. Just get them lined up best you can. Make sure there's no air caught in there. There's a little bit right there. I thought I felt it when I was doing this. I should have rolled it from one end and I didn't do that. But I'll just cut any little bubbles. There's one little bubble there. So just, you know, any little bubbles. This translucent is so sticky. 
that it was very easy to get bubbles in it and I should have probably put the white down first but anyway there's my translucent and my white and I'm going to cut this I'm, first I'm going to trim each side I'm going to make this about two inches wide I don't know what that is it's just a mark I thought it was a dog hair or something but it's just a mark And I'm going to get my ruler. Where, here it is. And I'm just going to trim a straight edge here. And I want to make it about two inches wide. So if I put the two inch mark there and make a mark, and the two inch mark here and make a mark, and the two inch mark there and make a mark, then connect those three marks, it should be two inches. I can find my marks. There it is. They all line up so I know I've got two inches. And let me see how close I stayed to nine inches. Well, all right, I need to just trim just a little bit off one edge. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bevel. I'm going to bevel about a fourth of an inch off and do the same thing on the other end and that should give me pretty close to the nine inches because it was just a little bit too long that's a slit that's not a okay I need to cut this into six pieces so nine inches Cutting it into six pieces would be an inch and a half each, right? So, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half. Yeah, that's, that'll do it. So, I'm going to cut this into six pieces. And I'm going to stack them one on top of the other to make a six layer stripe cane. I'm going to leave that on the bottom because it's not perfectly square and I'm going to line up this side because you don't want to lose any more than you have to. Try to line them up the best you can. You can always trim the ends, which is what I always do, but the less you have to cut off, the better. Okay. I thought about doing it in eight layers. But when Cassie did hers, she did it in six. And since I don't know what would happen if I change it to eight, I decided not to even try it. So now we have, let me trim the end edges. And again, just trim off what you have to. I'm going to leave the back side but there you go we have a it's actually 12 layer but it's six of each color can you see that now I got ahead of myself with the beveling 
I've got another piece of translucent that's rolled out to a number three. And I'm going to try to do a straight edge on this side just so we'll have something for a reference. And some white clay on my ruler. So now I've got this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, and this is still a little sticky, but I'm going to take thin slices of this cane that wasn't even a full slice I probably ought to use my my Lucy slicer in order to get enough slices out of this plus I think it needs to be a little bit cooler so I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'm gonna show you a trick on how to firm up your canes so you can Fix them. Okay, I have a bowl or a container of cold tap water. It's not ice water, it's just cold tap water. But I'm going to take this and put it in here. In a, this is a snack size Ziploc bag. And get as much air out of it as you can because you don't want it to float. And you're going to take this and put it in that cold water and let it sit for a few minutes. And it's going to firm it up. So I'm going to put this aside and move on to the colors. As soon as I find a place where I can put something so it won't spill. So I'm just going to put this translucent on a piece of deli wrap. And move on to the colors. Now these are really interesting colors. Look how the white turned out. It's almost a pale purple. So you never know what it's going to look like. And then this is the wisteria. Let me see. It's with these. It's just a very subtle change. You probably can't tell on your camera, but it's a very subtle change. And the green is probably going to be the hardest to see because it's the darkest color. But if you look at it, again, you probably can't tell the difference. It's a just very slightly changed the tone. And same thing with the blue. In case you want to see all of these. It doesn't change it a lot, but it changes it, the tone just enough that these colors will go together now. These I'll leave on the deli wrap. This is the red. Now there, I, no, I noticed a big change in the red when I was doing it. Can you see it's not quite as bright? I don't know how to that's about the best I can do and it doesn't looks like it doesn't look like it shows on the camera. And then the wasabi is also toned down a little bit. It's not quite as bright. This one you can see because it's the lightest color other than the white. But this now, even though it's still a lime green. All these colors will now go together so we can use them on the same bracelet. So I'm going to take a uh, three-quarter inch circle. These are all rolled out. I rolled them out to a number two on my pasta machine. It's You don't want them really thick, but you don't want them really thin. And I'm going to cut three-quarter inch circles and I'm going to try to put them in groups of three because I'm going to take three to roll into a bead. I 
and I'm not going to make you watch me do all of this. Matter of fact, I will fast forward. Okay, I don't have room on here to do the other two colors, so I'll I'll just show you what I'm going to do. And I'm going to I've got all these sheets of deli wrap laid out here. But I'm going to take three of each color and roll them into a ball. And try to make them close to round. You know, if you roll one way and then the other way in your hands, it makes them rounder. And I'm just going to lay them let me find one that doesn't have clay attached to it on a piece of deli wrap and I'll put all the light colors together but you mix three and you make a ball and then what we'll do is we're going to make a cane out of the white and the translucent it should be getting cool enough that I can slice it without it being mushy you know translucent clay is very mushy anyway so you need to cool it off, you know, in order to get it to be very usable. But I think I'll go ahead and roll these, and then I'll come back when I'm finished. Okay, I think our cane has set in the cool water long enough. So take it out of the, you know, out of the water and be sure you dry everything off before you take your clay out. You don't want to mix water in your clay. And hopefully this will be a little bit firmer to cut. And as you can see, I've moved my Lucy slicer over. Let me take the guard off. And unscrew the safety so it will go all the way down and I'm going to move this all the way to the back and it looks like I've got about a half an inch I need to bring it forward to get up to the the blade I'm sorry you can't see any better Okay, so I'm going to just slice, and this one is going to make the edge straight, so I'll get rid of that. And I put it on an index card so that when I'm finished cutting, I can just pull it out. Going the wrong way. But you want to make this about an eighth of an inch. This might not have been such a good idea because it's not sticking. Let me pull this out. It needs to stick to the surface. But you can see it's, it's going to cut some nice slices. And be careful with this when you're use, putting your fingers under it. Make sure you've got a good... Okay, and you roll it an eighth of an inch. And make another slice. I think it's about three little turns. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And just cut all these in about one eighth. That's not quite thick enough. One eighth inch slices.
And this is much easier than using a blade. And you can get even slices. And that last one I need to pull off. Now let me use my blade. Whatever you do, don't put your finger under this because it's very, very sharp. If it happens to fall, let me use my little kidney. And then there's a stop guard here. And then you put this over it. So that you don't stick your finger under it by mistake. Okay, so now I'm going to move this back out of the way. And I'm going to bring out my piece of translucent clay. Remember the one with the straight edge? That's going to be this one. And what I'm going to do is lay these canes lengthwise across this translucent. And I'm not starting at the end only because that happens to be where it ha stuck when I dropped it down. So I will... Make sure you put your translucent stripe next to your white stripe. And you see the band-aid. Yes, I cut my finger because I had this jerk reaction. So luckily I have band-aids here at my clay table. But just line these up. That messed up a little bit, but that's okay. It's not going to matter. Just be careful and put be remember to put your white stripe next to the translucent. Okay, so now I've got my stripes on there. I'm going to clean my roller off since I have other colors of clay on my roller. And let me just move the camera a little bit so you can be sure. This is my open drawer that I have. And I'm going to roll this way with the roller, not to make it any thinner, but just to make it flat. But make sure you go this way, because if you go this way, you're going to mess up your stripes. So that's all done. Now over here, I'm going to make a little beveled edge. This is where the bevel comes in. It wasn't on the other piece of translucent. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Maybe make it a little bit wider. And I'm going to also trim off these ends. So that we have a straight line. And I may as well trim the other end too, up maybe even with the where the translucent ends. I 
I think she Cassie called this a bandana type print or a cane or whatever. I don't know that bandanas have this type of design, but hey, worked for me. Now we're going to start here. We need to separate it first from the tile. Then we're going to start on this end and just roll that little bit of translucent up. And we're going to turn this into a jelly roll cane. Looks like I didn't trim that end as close as I needed to, but I will trim them off once we get them done here. Let me cut this side off. But it, there's a jelly roll cane that's white and translucent, and I think that is so cool looking. And... I'm going to get my ruler and lay it out here. We need to reduce this down to about 5 inches. And being translucent, it's going to uh, reduce very easily. cut these ends off to make this exactly five inches. Then I'm going to cut this in half, which is two and a half inches. And I'm going to save this one. And then I'm going to take this one and roll it down to five inches. Again, it's a little bit more than five, so I'll just trim the ends off. Okay. And I will cut this in half, which is two and a half, and reduce this one down to five inches. And you just keep going until you get as small as you want your designs to be. And that is right about five inches. I think I'll just do it one more time. So let me cut this at two and a half. This is so sticky. Oh, I'm, I didn't need to go this far. I just was going to go to five inches, which is what I'll do. I mean, I was going to only have to go to two and a half inches. But this will be fine. And it doesn't even matter how long it is because we're just going to be making slices. Now I've got all of my little balls all rolled. And I think I'll take the dark green since that's the color that's the darkest and these will show up the best on. And we're going to take a very, let me get a clean blade, a sharp blade. I don't know how, how much this one's been used, but it's sharper than the one I've got. And you're going to start with taking one very thin slice, and I, I probably should use my Lucy slicer again. Because I am not really good at slicing thin slices. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my Lucy slicer out again, and I'm going to slice these. So I'm going to move these out of the way. Get my Lucy slicer back out. And bring it back. You notice I've got a wooden, I don't know, maybe you haven't, couldn't see it. I've got a piece of wood back here because at the end, let me turn this sideways. You look here, this is what was pushing the canes up, but it stopped right about a half an inch before you got here. So you never could cut that last half an inch of cane. So I put a wooden block in here and it's stuck in there pretty good. And so that pushes my canes out a little bit. Hi, I moved my camera hoping that you would be able to see what I'm doing on my slicer. And uh, then I turned, I accidentally did the, <laughs> hit the um, lens cover and closed it. Couldn't figure out how to get that done. But anyway, excuse me. Anyway, you can see I put all four of my sizes in here. And I'm going to move this up to where it's going to be ready to cut. I'm going to release my safety. And I'm going to move them up to where it will slice the little one. The little one's a little bit shorter. Okay, so that will do all of them. So I'm just going to roll this up just a very little bit because I want a very thin slice. That's a little bit too thin, but those are really nice slices. Look at this. Can you see how thin they are? So I might use a couple of those. So let me do just a little bit thicker because I have to be able to handle them. Once you get started, I don't know if you can see through my hand, but I can do some very thin slices after we get started. And you want to cut this as thin as you can because if you don't, the translucent will keep, will create a little bit of a shadow. It's mushing a little bit. Let me move these out of here. That will probably, no, it didn't stick. But I'm just going to cut some thin slices. And it's getting sticky, so I'm just going to stop there. Let me get these off. See how sticky this translucent is? I'll remove these. Take these out. Then I'm going to fasten the, the lock on that. It's, it leaves about a quarter of an inch of clearance down there so it doesn't dull your blade. And then they gave us this magnetic ruler is actually what it is. But it keeps you from um, cutting yourself when you're trying to maneuver it. Now the worst part is going to be trying to separate these. I probably should have 
tried to release them as they were sliced instead of continuing to slice. But let me see if I can get the little ones separated. They're not mushed together. They're just stuck where they meet. And I think this is going to be fine. See if I can pull these loose without tearing them. Okay, I'm back on my at my regular view. I'm pulling these apart. I don't know. They're so sticky. I hope they don't stick together too bad. But again, I'm going to take the red ball, one of the red balls. I mean, green. It's not very red, is it? It's green. And I don't know that I'm going to use the big one. It's just a little bit too big, I think. But I'm going to pull one of these slices off. And put it on here, just wherever. And I think I'll get another one of that size. Let me see the best way to get these separated. That's actually two of them. Anything other than translucent wouldn't be this sticky. And I'm going to give up on those two. Here's one here that's come loose. And again, I probably should have put these in the freezer or something to firm them up before I put them on here. And then I'll take a few of this size. And I'll go ahead and separate a few while I've got them in my hands. Those two aren't going to separate. Good thing I have plenty. But anyway, you take these. Actually, that's two, but they're so thin. And just kind of decorate your, your piece. Won't be able to see through that one very well because it's a double thickness. But you don't have to see through all of them. Some of them can be hidden, and I'll show you how we do that in a minute. So I'll just put a few of these on here. I don't know if these little ones, how they're going to do. They're so tiny. Just cover them up. Even holding them in my hands like this is going to make them stick together. Here's one right here. I'll put this on here. Anyway, you get you decorate it the way you want it. And then you roll it with your hands. And like I said, if you roll like clockwise and then you roll them counterclockwise, they will be rounder. They won't have be quite so oval. Now there's a blue one. And so you've got these little designs rolled in all over. Now on this one, well, I guess, I think this is it, the one that was... thick, but I'm going to get a piece of patty paper, and I'm going to get my acrylic block, and 
and I'm going to, I'll press here, press it into a bead about maybe a quarter of an inch thick. See that? But, take one side and narrow it so that this is actually at a slant. Can you see how this is at a slant? It's narrower on this side than on this side. And we'll do this with all of our beads. And then when we put them together, they'll fit better. And I'll show you more as, as let me do a, a few others. But these colors now will all go together because they all have the same colors incorporated in them. But now that I know that a double layer going to be okay. And if you don't want that little tag there, just press it with your fingernail. And you can shape these as you put them on. I would come in closer, but I know I wouldn't stay in frame. Put a couple of these bigger ones on there. Oh yeah, that worked well. I think once they cool off a little bit, they'll do better. I'll put the other ones maybe over here somewhere. That's. I'm trying to roll these to where they look a little rounder when I get them on the bead. So that was the medium size. Let me put some of these. Let's see. Here they are. Put some of this size on there. See, now that I haven't handled these in a little while, they're a bit easier to peel. They're just so soft when you're using them. So try to remember to put them in the freezer or somewhere to um, make them a little firmer before you try to slice them. I really should have done that and I didn't. I apologize. So let me find where I want to be the inside. That doesn't look too pretty there so I'm going to press there because the where you're pressing is going to be up against another bead. And I'll press that one crooked. And you see when you put these together with the narrow ends together, it'll it'll go right it will be rounder. It'll fit around your wrist better than if they were all the same size. I think this one needs to be smashed just a little bit more. But you're going to do the same thing with all of your colors. I'll do one on the red. And then I'll do the rest off camera. And when I get them done, I'll only need about four of each of these colors. And when I get four of each of the colors done, I will be back and show you how we finish up. So I'll be back. I wanted to show you, I needed to cut some more of the canes and I wanted to show you, you can cut it just with a blade and then lift them off and lay them on the paper. Even though this, the big one still gets a little misshapen, you can just pat it back. But this way you don't have to peel them apart. And I probably should have taken them off the Lucy slicer as they were sliced but I didn't. So I just wanted to show you, you can slice them with a blade. It's just not as quick, but at least this way you can keep them from sticking together. So I'm going to continue slicing and continue covering beads, and then I'll be back for the next step. Okay, I'm almost finished with my beads. I just had a couple and I just thought I'd 
do the last two on camera and then we will go on to the next step there and you might want to look at them and make sure that they're all the shape you want them to be some of them might get a little oval looking this one isn't as big as the others so I need to squeeze this one a little bit more I had to go feed my dog so I did this some of them afterwards and you can tell the difference in the size of the ones I did before and the ones I'm doing now I think this red one could probably be squished a little bit more. But I think they're looking okay. A couple of them look a little oval, but we can fix those as we put the holes in them. Alright, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a hole. But first you have to determine what you're going to use for your uh, elastic and there's different things you can use there's this beading cord elastic which is black and it's you know I think I got this at Walmart and then I have this which is Doris and this is stretchy cord and I think just because this is clear that's what I'm going to use and you look at the thickness of it and you need a hole let me see if I can find something dark. You need a hole. I can't, but anyway, a hole that will. There, I can see the light, I guess. That this will go through. This is a one millimeter. So I'm thinking I will probably. Let me see how big this is. Where's my ruler? This is not quite two millimeters, so I think that will be plenty big. And you're going to want to put this right in this as close to the center as you can. And I would go in from both sides just to give it a clean hole. And let me show you on one that's a little bit darker. I'll come in closer and hopefully remember to go back out before I go any further. There. I'll find the center, which is about here, and I'm going to go in from this side and just twist. When this point comes through, it pushes the clay out a little bit, so if you pull it back out and go in from the other side, it kind of takes care of that. So we need to do this for all of our beads and we're going to bake and you know me, I always bake for an hour at 275. This is Primo so 275 is a good temperature for it. But I'm going to bake this and then we will come back. Oh, I need to tell you and I'll pick one. I think I'll pick a red one where I'm going to make the hole just a little bit bigger. So let me po poke my hole. And when I go in, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because this is the bead. When I tie off my cord, I'm going to pull it inside this bead. So this one is a little bit bigger. You notice the holes are just a little bit bigger than that one. So that's what that is for. So I will finish poking these holes. I'm going to bake them for an hour at 275 and then we'll be back and put it together. Hi everyone. I'm back and our beads are all baked and cooled and ready to go. So I think I think I said I was going to use this Doris um, 
stretchy cord, and I am. And I'm going to cut, oh, I don't know, maybe 12 inches off of it. And one thing that I like to do, let me put that. One thing I like to do when I use this nylon uh, or rubber co uh, stretchy cord is to pull it through my fingers and stretch it. Because if you don't, you may find that it will stretch a little bit as you wear it. And you don't want that to happen. Yeah, that's pretty much got it. But my 12-inch cord went to about, oh, I don't know, about 16, 17, maybe even 18 inches now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to tie, or well, actually, let me get something real quick. I'm lucky to have beading supplies. Imagine that. Gail has everything. Um, and I use these little clips. You could just tie a big knot in here or tie something loose on here, but I'm just going to clip this with my clip, and now no nothing will go past that. And I'm just going to start stringing. I'm going to start with the blue. Let's see, where's my red? This is the red with the big hole. So I need that to be on an end. So I guess I will start with that. So let me move. This beige ended up being more of a pink, which is fine. At least, you know, it still matches because it's got the same color in it. But I think that's pretty neat. So I'm going to put the red with the big hole. Remember, this one has a bigger hole on this end. And then I'm just going to start stringing these. And I'll go to the pink. And the green, the lime green, or the bright green, whatever you want to call this, the wasabi. And this, something must be in there. I can see straight through it. I don't know what would be stopping this from going through, except this end. I must not have gone in from the other end on this one. And I'm just going to follow them in the same order as they are on my table. Just because I've kind of already laid them out with the colors that I wanted together. And I'm just going to start stringing them. And you'll see that they will eventually, automatically, the, the thin side is going to... end up um, together. And it just kind of happens on its own. I guess it's a physics thing. Now, this is also the time that if you wanted to glaze your beads, this would be a good time to do it. Um, I am not going to glaze them at this point. Um, I have something on its way that I might pull these back out and finish them with this. But until then, I'm going to just leave them natural. I, I kind of like the feel and the... There's another one I didn't do all the way through. You know, when you have so many, sometimes you miss one or two but I like the feel of um, the clay I like the way it looks if you use either Kato or Primo it's got a nice that wasn't right I didn't want the purple did I I gotta go this way but it, Primo or 
Kato is going to give you a nice, smooth uh, feel, and I just like the feel of it. Uh, the souffle is a little suede, if that's a word. And I don't know that I, I mean, it might be good for a bracelet like this. You don't ever know. Don't know till you try it. And I hope this is going to be enough beads because it's all I made. And I may have to take some off. It just depends on how tight this ends up getting. Something about these green ones. I must have skipped over these green ones when I was doing my backside. I know when I put this on, I don't know if, if it was um, on fast forward or if I just skipped it. But I was doing a bunch at one time and evidently some of them didn't get done on the back. But that's okay. And let me just see if this looks right. Actually, I think I'm going to pull this through a little bit more so I have more to work with and slide my clip down a little bit. And I'm going to put a clip on the other end just so if I drop it, they don't go everywhere. Make sure red, pink, and green. If I just do that red, pink, and blue. Red, pink, and blue. How did that happen? So I've got the blue between. Red, pink, blue. Red, pink, blue. And here I've got red, pink, green. I've got these two reversed. So it's always a good thing. It's always a good thing to check these before you tie it together so you don't have to worry about trying to untie it. And now I'll get it in the same order as the others. And I know I was kind of doing this a little backwards. But I knew what I was doing. Whoops. And you can pull it together like this just to see. Oh, that one's got some cracks in it. But that's already right. on the thin side, so it's going to not show. But see how these just sort of automatically, when I pull them together, they automatically, kind of, except for this red one, turn the thin side to the middle. I'm going to go ahead and tie this with my clip on it in case I need to undo it again. Now I'll take it off because it looks like it's going to be fine. And draw it tight. And draw this tight. And you can take your, if you have clips or whatever you're using, you can take those off. And now what I'm going to do I'm going to trim off my ends. Let me pull it real tight again just to make sure it's pulled tight. Yeah. And I'm going to stretch this out and cut that short. It's about maybe a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to take some This is Loctite Super Glue, which is awesome. I really like this. And this is the gel, and it's la it doesn't dry up inside. But I'm going to put a little bit of that on that knot. 
And from the other side of the red, I'm going to pull that knot into that big hole that we made in the red bead. Oops, pull it all the way through. But that way you don't have a knot showing. And now it'll dry. And there is your bracelet. Let me put it on. I've got a small wrist. So I probably could have used maybe two or three more beads. So the next time, instead of making five of each color, or what did I make? I made four of six colors. So the next time I would make five of six colors, so that way I would have some extra ones to uh, add to it. But I would still wear this, but I think I will. I've got some extra clay. Let me put this away. And I've still got some of the little um, thing, the, the swirls, the jelly roll. I've still got some of those here. So I think I will restring this and add a couple to it. Um, I'll see how I can figure out how to add just a couple. So anyway, I hope you like this. I know I did. It was so much fun. And I haven't done a, a project with you in a while. Most of the things I do are showing you canes or techniques or whatever. But I really like this. That is such a cute bracelet. And I will add a couple of beads to this and then post a picture of it uh, with the added beads. If I could think of another color... I would put another color in there, but I don't have any more of the mud, so I don't know. It would have to be a generic. I could stick a white in there, but then I couldn't use the... I could put black, but I don't know that I want black. These are such pretty colors. I don't know. I will think of it, of something, and take care of it, but I, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me come in close. and let you take a good look at it. I love it. I just think it's so cute. So, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I don't know that I'll get the other two beads, or, you know, the other color beads made by the time this is posted, so I'll probably, now that I'm thinking about it, I won't have a chance to get a picture of it in this video, but it'll look just like this, except I'll have a couple more beads in it. So, Make one for yourself. Pick your own colors. You could have used uh, a monochrome color palette. You could use different shades of blue. You could use different shades of purple. Just by adding either black or white to your colors. <coughs> uh, there's a lot you can do with this. So, hope you enjoyed this. Come back again next Monday for another polymer clay tutorial. And then come back. Uh, get you a cup of coffee or hot chocolate or tea, whatever it is, whatever your beverage of choice is, and join me on Fridays for my Friday frolics. So I will see you soon. Bye-bye.